Hello everyone, it's so nice to be able to talk to you again. I'm really enjoying reading this story to you, I hope you're enjoying listening to it too. I wonder what you've been up to? I've been out on my bike. Felicity's going to work every day, so is Mr Norman still, because they both work in the food industry, so trying hard to keep our shelves stocked. And I've been doing lots of jobs around the house, thinking about you lots. Let's get on with this, shall we? Chapter 3. Chapter 3 of Far Jack Paul. Now, if you remember, odd things are happening in the house. The Contessa's bedroom is empty. There have been men in the house and black cats. And now the elder Paul has called, called a family meeting. Chapter 3. Family council is now in session, declared the elder Paul above the hubbub of the front room. Mother, father and Aunt Jeannie were whispering to one another, huddled together on a rug so old it had lost its pattern and faded away. Julius and Jasmine were sitting behind them, nodding seriously as if they were grown-ups too. Jay, Jethro and Jerome were fighting over the toy mouse, trying to put each other into the flames of the antique fireplace. At the elder Paul's words, they all settled down. Varjak was sitting quietly on his own at the back, but his mind was burning. This was his first family council. From the Contessa's red velvet armchair where he stood, the elder Paul began to speak. The family tales tell us when our ancestor Jalal came out of Mesopotamia, he wandered the earth for many years before finding a home with the Contessa. Generations of Pauls have lived in this house since Jalal's time, but those days may be coming to an end. I believe the Contessa is dead. The older cats gasped. They shot strange looks at each other and shook their heads. A log crackled loudly in the fireplace. The elder Paul waited until it was quiet again to continue. She has seldom left her room of late, only to feed us and tend the fire. Our youngest litter, Varjak, Jay, Jethro and Jerome, have hardly seen her. They barely even know what she looks like. She would only let that happen if she was ill, very ill. And now this gentleman. What we saw today confirms my fears. The Contessa is gone. Yeah, she's probably gone somewhere, said Father. I'm sure she'll be back. And in the meantime... Her gentleman friend is looking after us. He is not her friend, said the elder Paul. I remember him. He came to this house years ago, before any of you were born. He and the Contessa had a terrible argument. He wanted to take us away, but she wouldn't let him. She threw him out in the end, shouting and screaming. It was silent for a moment. Varjak saw father's eyes glint green in the dark. There was no light in the room but the crackling, flickering fire. This is absurd, said Aunt Jeannie. She licked her plump paws confidently. We're purebred Mesopotamian blues, the noblest of cats. Nothing bad can happen to us. It's silly to alarm the kittens like this, tutted Mother. They're too young and impressionable to understand anything so serious. They'll go and have nightmares now. You see if they don't. That's right. Father arches back and stood up. I don't understand the problem. The gentleman is feeding us better than the Contessa ever did. But why is he being so nice to us, said the elder Paul. Fancy food, presents, it's too good to be true. And what about those black cats who gave Varjak a scare? We all know about Varjak and his tales, declared Father. No, I see nothing to worry about. I don't believe in those cats, I don't believe the Contessa is dead, and I don't believe this is the same gentleman the elder Paul remembers. He must be getting confused in his old age. There was a murmur of agreement around the room. Varjak couldn't help himself, he had to speak. I saw the men carry something away, he said. It could have been the Contessa's body. Varjak, hissed mother. That really is too revolting. She turned to the elder Paul. You see what you've done? But it's true, said Varjak, and so are the cats. 
There, shut up, you stupid insect, snarled Julius. We're the only cats in the Contessa's house, and this is grown-up business, not kitten make-believe. Everyone started to shout at once. The flames roared louder and higher in the fireplace. Listen to me, demanded the elder Paul, struggling to regain control. We need to make a plan. If things change in this house, we will have to go outside. Elder Paul, cried Mother, what can you be thinking of? Everyone knows the world outside is full of monsters. At least here we're safe from the dogs. But we don't even know what dogs are, said the elder Paul. This house is the only world we know. This house is the only world we need, said Aunt Jeannie. The Contessa is fine. Everything will go on as before. Listen to me, pleaded the elder Paul. He stepped down off the armchair and into the middle of the room. Father squared up to him. No, you listen to me for a change. His fur bristled. Maybe it's time for someone else to make the decisions in this family. The room was completely still now, except for the raging fire. Shocked at what he was seeing, but unable to look away, Varjak watched the two of them intently. Everyone did. Father began to circle the elder poor, wordless and menacing. He bared his teeth. He looked twice as big, twice as fierce as normal. His shadow danced across the elder Paul's body in the firelight. He hissed and strode forwards. The elder Paul backed away. Suddenly he looked tired and old, very old, like the threadbare rug on which he stood. I'm just saying I think we should... That's enough, blazed father. This council is over. He turned to face the family. Let's go. There was a rumble of support around the room. Varjak's throat felt dry. He couldn't believe how fast it had happened. One moment the elder Paul was in charge, the next it was all over. Purebred Mesopotamian blues, croaked the elder Paul. The family of Jalal. Is this what we've sunk to? The council, spat father, is over. Goodness. I wonder what's going to happen next to those Mesopotamian blues. You'll have to tune in to find out. I hope you have a lovely day. I hope you're keeping well. And don't forget, you're all very, very, very precious. See you soon.